Hi, my name is Dr. Emily Spickle, podiatrist and human movement specialist. This video is all about performing the lateral view gait assessment. This is the third and final view when performing that gait assessment. Just like the other views, you want to remember all five subphases of gait. Starting with that initial contact, we are here. What I want you to look for from that lateral view at initial contact is the degree of ankle joint dorsiflexion. The more dorsiflexion at heel contact, the more the impact forces actually go up. So if you have a client that has chronic Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, watch the way that they walk and look at that degree of ankle joint dorsiflexion at initial contact. We're proceeding forward through the loading response, through mid stance. When we're at mid stance, it's hard to capture that subtalar joint and that spiral from a lateral view. So we're going to proceed forward to late mid stance. Now one of the easiest things that you can capture from a lateral view is the early heel lift. Remember that this is a compensation for limited ankle joint dorsiflexion through late mid stance. Doug is actually presenting with that early heel lift. The way that you can tell an early heel lift is that if the standing leg starts to lift off of that heel before the swing leg is in front of the center of gravity. It's a little bit hard to capture at first, but if you record your clients walking, you can slow that video down and actually look at the point that that heel starts to lift. Again, remember that the heel should lift once the swing leg is in front of the center of gravity. If it is before, that is considered an early heel lift. We then continue through propulsion, and we're going to again look at that dorsiflexion of that great toe joint. Again, it's a little bit hard to see from that lateral view. So a couple other things you wanna look for during the lateral view is the amount of hip extension that your client is moving through. Any limitation in ankle joint dorsiflexion is going to shorten your client's stride length. If you shorten the stride length, you start to shut off the posterior muscles and over recruit the anterior hip muscles. Another way that it might present of a short stride is if they have limited hip extension. So they have adequate, adequate great toe joint dorsiflexion, but limited hip extension. That would present by that shortened stride, or another way that that would present would be in an increase in lumbar lordosis. So if we move up, we would see that limited hip extension, you would see an increase in that lumbar lordosis in your client, or the other compensation is that they would actually lean forward. So your client would be walking this way to compensate for the lack of hip extension, so they're taking it out of their lumbar spine. The information that you grab from that lateral view, you want to compare to the posterior view, that anterior view, your foot posture assessment, use all of that information and create more effective corrective exercise programming and improve your client results.